Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Polly Plus and More Equals Us. Now, before we hop into today's episode, I have a bit of an announcement. This is going to be the final episode of our first season. So Mike and I have been talking and we've decided that we are going to end the first season here. We are going to take a break over the summer and begin again in August. Um, So the reason we are doing that is because we want to take the summer to really start dating and to really go and have those experiences and then come back to the podcast with more to talk about around actually dating. So it's an exciting announcement. Um, We've been talking for about this for a few weeks now and we just feel that it's right because we we are going to explore you know dating apps what is that like actually go on dates do all that so while we are experiencing all of this we are probably going to record some episodes here and there while it's all fresh in our minds um but we won't be releasing them until after the summer so season one is ending this is the last episode of the season but don't worry Season two is coming back probably at the beginning of August, maybe later, kind of just depends, but definitely by the end of the summer, beginning of fall, season two will be back. And we're really excited to share more with you just about our journey and how things are going. Um, But so for now, let's hop into this episode. Um... Stick around for the end and I'll I'll give some more details. Um, But today's episode, we are just picking up right where we left off, talking about astrology. Um, But we're going more into my chart and and then we have more discussions just uh, like a bit more broadly about astrology and, and our own personal growth and how astrology has really helped us through that. And helped us to really, you know, know ourselves on a deeper level. So that's what we get into today. It is a a little bit shorter of an episode. Um, We don't spend nearly as much time on my chart as we did with Mike's chart. And we spend more time just talking about the bigger picture of astrology and how it plays into our lives and how it plays into polyamory. All right, so that's it. Let's hop into the episode. Yeah, and and I do have to say that I feel like um, the more I have sort of done this like self work and looked at myself and and learned more about myself and <clears throat> and like self discovery and and truly understanding myself, the more my chart has made sense. There are things in my chart when I first learned about astrology and I wasn't, and like now I look back and I'm like, oh wow, I I was very out of touch with my own self. Mm -hmm. A lot of things didn't make sense, but that's because I wasn't truly looking at myself. And the more I, I do, the more my chart makes sense. So I do think there is a certain level of like self awareness. Mm that someone has to have in order for their chart to make sense. Because the more self-aware I become, the more my chart makes sense. But if you're yeah. not super self-aware, if you're like in denial maybe about a lot of things in your life, if you aren't, you know, wanting to really like sort of know yourself, then a lot of the things in your chart, you're going to read it and you're going to be like, that's not me. But also because you're denying parts of yourself. Yeah. I know. I totally agree. I've totally experienced that. Yeah. For me, it was like, yeah, it was, it was not being self-aware, but it was also just kind of like, I felt like I was fighting who I was with who I wanted to be Mm -hmm. and I wasn't embracing or accepting what my natural tendencies were and who I was. Mm -hmm. And so I'd always be like, oh, this is like, 
that's not who I am. I'm, I'm this because I want to be more like this. Yeah. Which is true. Like, yeah, I do want to be more like that, but I can't, you know, deny who I am right now. Yeah. Because then there's always going to be like that, that struggle. Yeah. And also you're just, you're not, I feel like you're not starting at the beginning, which is acceptance. Mm -hmm. You need to first accept, like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, now from where, like, from from this starting point of where, like, of who I am, how do I get to who I want to be? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I totally get that. Because, like, yeah, I felt the same exact way. Mm -hmm. I was, I was like, denying that first step. Mm -hmm. I was trying to go, like, too far ahead. Like, I want that instead. I'm going to ignore all the beginning of, like, who I am. But. Yeah. Yeah, and that's work. that's why some of the stuff. I remember the first time I told you that your moon sign was in Cancer, mm -hmm. and you were like, "That's not me," <laughs> <laughs> you know. And it was yeah. like, "Okay," but yeah. now today in our conversation, you're like, "Wow, that was me." Yeah. You you literally were like, "But I'm," you didn't you didn't yeah. want it to be you. Oh yeah, it was a hard denial. Yeah, yeah, and so I can accept it exactly. So like. It, it, yeah, it's just so funny that like, yeah, so you have seen that and, and, and I have seen it too. The more yeah. I understand myself, the more it's like, oh fuck, that was right. But yeah, it's not like I'm just, it's also <clears throat> not like, I'm, I'm not just like agreeing with it, just to like agree with it also. No. It's like I've had that realization and understanding first and I'm like, yeah, that is, you've gone, that is accurate. That is how it. I have felt thinking back on my entire life uh -huh. and who I am, you know, to this day. Yeah. I just wasn't, yeah, I, just, I wasn't accepting it at the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. Okay. Should we, should we switch to my chart? Yeah. See your chart. Okay. Enough so we, about me. So we started. That's, that's too much self-focus well, for an Aquarian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. We're working on that, that Aries North node, right? <clears throat> Um, but yeah, so we kind of started with Mike's chart one, because he, he was very skeptical, right? And so now to sort of go from being very skeptical to being like, wow, this is really, and like we said, like you've gotten to know yourself more and you've gone through that process of being like, wow, the more I get to know myself, the more this makes sense. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to start with you rather than start with me, who's like, I'm fully in it. I'm like, yes, this all makes sense. I get it. You know, I wanted to start with you. Um, so my chart, let's go over to me. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we'll go through my chart quicker than we went through your chart because I think it's a little bit easier because I already know my chart and know myself. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we'll go and... Give more focus. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to start with the... Uh, the big three, like we talked about, my sun, my moon, and my rising. So my sun is in Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. And so Aries is very, um, very, can be very playful, right? I talked about Aries being the first sign. So um, like think very like childlike, playful, naive. Um, but also when you think of a child, right, they like to have fun and they can be silly but then they throw temper tantrums and they just tell you you know this is how I'm feeling no I don't want this and ah right like think of like a child that is like literally Aries <laughs> <laughs> if you are watching this I hope you saw Mike's face <laughs> yes would you like to say something Mike <laughs> as long as you don't throw a temper tantrum <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I've, I've definitely experienced <laughs> the Aries several fire. Several of those. <laughs> yes. Enough that I can't remember how many exactly. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's not saying a lot, but there's definitely made a good number. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, whatever. But yes, so Aries is a fire sign, and I, um, I definitely embody a lot of the Aries um, traits. Um, so some of, like, like I was saying, a lot of like the really fun and sort of like, um, you know, light side of Aries is very playful, very determined. Aries is like, like I was saying earlier, Aries um, is the ruler of Mars or Mars is the ruler of Aries. No, Aries is the ruler of Mars. Um, 
And so, like, if you know Ares, Mars, those are the gods of war in, um, you know, Greek and Roman mythology. So Ares, Mars, god of war. Um, it's very masculine energy. Ares is, like, very determined, very, um, um, like, straightforward, very um, fiery, but can also be, um, Aries is known for their, their temper. We're super competitive, which can be really, really good, but it can also be really, really bad. Um, you know, like, super competitive, very athletic. Um, like, when I was a kid, I had, like, all of this energy and like my parents didn't know what to do and they were like put her in cross country just let her run for miles and miles and miles <laughs> <laughs> let her wear herself out <laughs> yes let her wear herself out because i just had all of this energy and that is a super like aries trait to just be like full of energy like more so very than, like, competitive the yes yeah of course all kids are very you know have tons of energy but it was like like extra <laughs> yeah like my mom would say that like I we would go outside and play and when all of the other kids would get tired I would still be like what are we doing let's go and that's why she was like go run you know where's the after party yeah um but Aries is also known for their temper um, for having like a short fuse, right? Think, think of fire, right? You can have this fire and then it just like bursts, right? Like that, mm -hmm. that is Aries. Yeah. And so that's, that is my sun sign. That is like the core. And I feel like anyone who really knows me would be like, yeah, you are for sure an Aries, right? Yeah. That, yeah, that one's very obvious with you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and then my rising sign or my ascendant is Leo. And so Leo is also a fire sign. So I have these two fire signs um, and anyone, anyone will tell you that like, yes, like, like Elisa, a fire sign, duh. It's <laughs> like, I just, I have a lot of those qualities. Yeah. Good thing you were red right now too. Oh yeah. See? Um <laughs> But Leo, Leo is like stereotypically like the performer. Leo also loves to be the center of attention. Um, so does Aries. Oh, and that's the other thing. Aries is all about me, 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 me. Think about the little kid, right? The first sign of the zodiac, little kid is very, is all about me, 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 me. And like we were talking about earlier, yeah. uh, like that's just, I, I have always been that way. Yeah. And it's not... I wouldn't say necessarily I am self-centered. Maybe when I was younger, I was. Um, but as a kid, like, your brain's also not fully developed, so, like, your world is... Yes, I, like, everyone when they're young is very... What you know more... and see and what you feel. Yes, but even now, even now, I am still very much me, 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 me. Um, and, and, but, so Leo loves to be center of attention. Um, Leo is a performer, Everyone knows that, like, I, that since I was old enough to remember, I've always wanted to be on stage. Always. My, my earliest memory of, like, wanting to be on stage, um, we were at, it was on my mom's side of the family. I think we were at a wedding or something. And my uncle is in, like, a band with, like, other family members. And they were on stage playing, and I was, like, three years old. And I went up, and I was like, I want to sing Achy Breaky Heart. <laughs> and so they did. So they played it, and I grabbed the microphone, and I sang, and I was on stage, and I was three years old. Like, you know, like, <laughs> that. Awesome. And, like, that's just always been me. I just yeah. love performing. So I'm um, the opposite. I've never <clears throat> had that thought as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That just never crossed my mind. Yeah. So, like, acting was never even, like, on my radar. Yeah. As, like, a possible profession. Yeah. And that's what I've done and wanted to do for my whole life. Mm -hmm. It's just be an actor. Yeah. Be on stage. And it's not it's not even necessarily acting. It's performing. I just love yeah. performing. And that is such a Leo trait. Um, and, like, I didn't know that. You know, and then when I learned that, I was like, oh, my God, that is so me. Um, but Leo is also very, like, fun-loving. Uh, Leos have, like, these huge hearts. Um, and But 
Leo doesn't always show it and it's very different than like cancer, right? Cancer is very, um, like we said, like nurturing can be very motherly. Um, Leo has this big heart and loves, but loves in like a very like different way. It's like, 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 like being like, you're the greatest, you're the best, like in that like cheerleader kind of way. That is very Leo. That's like the okay. Leo way of loving, you know, is to be like, you're amazing. Like you, like, oh my God, that dress looks fabulous. Leos usually are very also all about the hair um, and, and very like really? about fashion. Like yeah. The lion mane? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's what it is. is it? Okay. Lion. Yeah. yeah. Leo is the lion and like, yeah, the lion. But your mane. expression of love is a little more like <clears throat> verbal and direct and explicit. Um, well for, yeah, if you're like a Leo or if you have Leo as like your moon sign maybe, or Leo as your, um, Venus maybe, um, yeah, yeah, your, your way of like showing that you like love or care about someone can be very much maybe like through compliments and showering them, but also being very protective. Um, so like if someone were to like make fun of you, well, actually, I don't know if this is a Leo or an Aries thing. Um, but like if someone were to like make fun of you to be like the first one to defend, to be like, no, like this, no, my friend is amazing. Don't you dare like to be yeah. very defensive of your friends. Yeah. I don't know if that's Leo or Aries, but either way. It's yeah. Me. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be like afraid to like <clears throat> be confrontational or to like defend your friends. It would the, just be like an instant reaction. I think the confrontational bit, not being afraid of confrontation, that is Aries. Mm -hmm. But the um, being sort of like defensive of your friend, because you can be defensive without being confrontational. True. That sort yeah. of like being defensive and like standing up for your friends is a very Leo thing. But since I have both, I will stand up for my friends and be very confrontational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So you'll stand up for them and like get in the other person's face. Yes. Kind and <laughs> and my best friend Amanda will totally attest to that because there have been moments, especially when I was younger, um, where, yeah, I would, if someone like were to make fun of her or be mean to her, it was like me that was jumping to action to like fight this person, really? you know? Yeah. And then she'd be like, whoa, whoa, Elisa, like chill the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> and she is a Leo. She is a Leo. Yeah. So that that like confrontational part of like defending was definitely like my my Aries fire. Oh, okay. As we like to say. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I got this, but Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> getting in that person's face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But that yeah, that's the Aries. So I have these two fire signs um as my son and as my rising so they like really get along together and they have a lot of similar traits because they are both fire signs now think about when we looked at, at yours right yeah. we were looking at um an air sign aquarius is an air sign then we looked at virgo which is an earth sign and then we looked at your uh cancer moon which is water mm -hmm. so and they were all like yeah there were a few things that were similar but they were all kind of like different their own things yeah. right but because i have two fire signs it's very similar and so it's like extra fire yeah and then we have my moon sign and my moon is in pisces and pisces is a water sign and pisces is the very last sign of the zodiac mm. and so kind of like what you were saying about your aquarius and your virgo kind of always like you kind of felt like pulling you were always pulling. And yeah. I felt that my whole life with my sort of like Aries sun and my Pisces moon. And when I first read about astrology and I read that my moon sign was in Pisces, it was like, it, yeah, it was like this huge like revelation. And it was the, like, like, oh my God, it all made sense. Yeah. Because... Pisces is a water sign, so opposite of fire. Um, and the last sign of the zodiac, whereas Aries is the first. And Pisces is Pisces is sort of like the um, where where Aquarius is all about the good of everyone. Pisces is kind of like like almost to the next realm. 
in a sense. Like Pisces is like the most intuitive. Usually if you are a Pisces or if you have Pisces as your moon, you're like super, super intuitive, um, very psychic um because it's it's the last sign it's like the transition into like the next life or the next world you know what i mean like the transition into um spirit in a sense yeah it's like you're the furthest from like here exactly yeah it's like kid teenager adult yeah like old soul and then there's like next realm (laughs) yeah yeah exactly so pisces is very like the like in the spirit world yeah you know yeah um and, but so to have a Pisces moon, it's, it's also very like sensitive, like, like your water sign, right? Like you, you have cancer as a water sign as your moon and I have Pisces. Um, and so Pisces is very, like very soft, very intuitive, um, and very sensitive. And that's the thing that that Pisces always gets like a bad rap for like, oh, you're so sensitive. Like, because like, like when you hear people talking about like, oh, you're an empath, you can feel other people's emotions. That is Pisces. Pisces is the empath. And so to have Pisces as your moon, which is your empathetic self, I feel other people's emotions and I didn't really know that I felt that until like very recently and I realized when I was younger I would hide that shit oh my god I didn't want anybody to know that I was sensitive and so I I like hid my Pisces moon behind all of that fire and I was almost like ashamed that I was so sensitive and so I would overcompensate Mm -hmm. And I would act like things didn't bother me. I don't care. Like I was called a bitch so many times when I was younger. But because that really? was like yes, because I would I like would kids sort at of school? yeah. Uh. And I but I I wore it like a badge of honor. I was like yes, I am a bitch. You know, don't mess with me because I was <laughs> overcompensating <Found> because. <laughs> No, I was overcompensating because I was so sensitive Uh, and things really, really hurt me, but I didn't want people to know that. And so instead I hid behind my like Aries fire, right? Because that was so easy for me to just be like, to be like, no, and to be mean and to be aggressive. Yeah. Right. And because my, yeah, because Aries, Aries is you know, is still ruled by Mars. So that Aries is very um, masculine. And so it's almost like the opposite of what you were saying, how yeah. you were like, it was very hard for you to like put yourself out there and sort of be aggressive. Yeah. That's like, that's my go-to defense mechanism. Aggression. Yeah. You know? That's so funny because I remember the first few days that we first met, <laughs> that's exactly what I saw. Yeah. But then you, you'd show like every now and then, you'd, you'd show your sensitive side. Yeah. And then, like, I'd also picked up on that, too. And I was like, yeah, you have this, like, fiery outer outer facade mm-hmm. or, like, what you show. But, like, you know, there's definitely, like, a tenderness there, too. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly it. And, yeah, that's so funny you say that because that's, that's, like, exactly what I saw when I first met you. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the exact impression I got. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I would use, right, so the – we were talking about um, your ascendant or your rising, right, So my rising is Leo. The like, look at me, I'm a performer, I'm fun, I'm whatever. And then I use my like Aries fire as my defense mechanism Mm -hmm. of like, you know, and like don't get too close to me or if you're going to be mean, right? But it's it's because it is, it's my firewall. Yes, (laughs) because I am so, so sensitive and I don't, I don't let people see that. Yeah. Um, But of course, as I... As, as I get to know people and sort of let them in, then they see that. And that's why now you're like, you know that because I, you know, I let you in. Yeah. But I don't let people in very easily. And so that also ties into the eighth house, right? We were talking about your Mars being in the eighth house. Mm-hmm. I have my sun and my moon in the eighth house. And so, um, right, like, so the eighth house we were saying... Typically, if you have planets in there, you like to keep them very private. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what 
mm-hmm. what I just said, right? Is like, I, I, I don't let people get close to me. You know, I will let people see that like Leo side of me, the like fun and playful and woo. But I, I am very, very protective of who I am. Like, I don't have, like, lots and lots of friends, right? I have just a few very close friends because I don't like to let people in through that firewall because I am so sensitive. But I just don't let people see that, and so most people don't know it. So a lot of people, when they're, you know, when they, they're like, you have a Pisces moon? What? Uh Like, you are sensitive? People would never guess that, but that's also because I wouldn't ever let them. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not, not unless you are really, really close to me, will you ever see that side of me. Yeah. Because I've always been very protective of it. And so, and so I always felt like there, there were these two sides of me that I didn't like, that were like battling, right? There was that Aries fire and that like, I'm going to go for things and I'm, I'm going to be this and I'm not going to care what other people think. But then it was like, oh, but everything just hurt so much. But I was like ashamed of that and I didn't like it. And so I was denying it, right? Like we were talking about like denying aspects of your chart. I was like denying that like I had this sensitivity. Mm -hmm. But once I read in my chart that I had this Pisces moon, it was like, wow, it all made sense. And I was like, that's why I am so sensitive and why I've been trying to hide it um, because it's in my eighth house and I didn't want people to know and I was ashamed of it. Yeah. So it was like, I had this huge breakthrough when I read that and I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah, because it, yeah, it put words to uh, how you'd felt. Yeah. Practically your whole life. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. So those are the three like main ones. Um, And then we touched a little bit on, um, oh, we didn't touch on my Mars, but that's okay. So now I want to talk about an aspect that we didn't talk about in your chart. Let's talk about, so how how do you think your your signs like relate to you being polyamorous or wanting to be polyamorous? Well, so that's what I want to get to. Okay, okay. So, right, so, so far all of these things don't really... You're like, okay, but how, how does any of that really relate to being polyamorous? And so far, I, wouldn't, I would say like, eh, not really. Yeah. But we haven't looked at two key aspects in my chart that I think are like the obvious like, hello, here it is, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's my Mars and my Venus. And we didn't really talk about Venus in your chart. Um, <clears throat> but so my Mars and my Venus – are both in Aquarius, and they're both Mm. in my sixth house. Yeah. I don't really think the house is too important. But, well, it is, but we're just going to focus on the fact that they are both in Aquarius, right? So what do we know about Aquarius? (laughs) Well, well, we talked about with my my sun sign. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm Open-minded. Let your freak flag fly. Mm -hmm. Innovative. Mm Mm-hmm. Kind of new, new free thinker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All so that. <laughs> all of that, right? So when you take all of that <clears throat> and then you stick your Mars and your Venus in there. Um, so Mars is that energy we talked about of like, um, of like how you put yourself out there. It's your masculine energy. And we, we can also look at it as, um, the type of partner, right, since I am a female and female identifying female um, and heterosexual looking for a partner, I guess it doesn't matter if you're heterosexual or not, but the masculine energy, typically if you are female identifying, you can look at your Mars and say, okay, whatever sign your Mars is in, that's the sort of, like, partner you are looking for. And my Mars is in Aquarius. Oh, and so I'm looking for a partner who is an Aquarius or has those traits. Oh, look it. I have a partner who's an Aquarius. <laughs> what? Like, I didn't know that. Um, and then Venus is the opposite. So if, um, 
so uh, for Venus, I, I am looking to be loved. That, that is how I want to be loved. It is also an Aquarius. So I, I am looking for love that is <clears throat> sort of different. That is, you know, the rebel, the let your freak flag fly. That is not sort of the, the status quo. Yeah. And, That's the kind of love I'm like looking for. And more like oriented too. Yes, exactly. More open. Aquarius is about open, about the group, about... Yeah, and so if like that's the sort of love I am looking for, then then I'm looking for something very different, and I'm looking for something that probably isn't monogamy. Mm -hmm. And so when I discovered that in my chart, I was like, "Holy shit!" And again, that's not to say that just because your Venus is in Aquarius and you are a woman that you that monogamy isn't right for you. Again, we have to look at all of the, the different aspects and how they play out. Yeah. Um, Is that saying <clears throat> more so that you want to like receive love in more of like a polyamorous way, whereas mine is I more of like want to give love in that kind of way? Can you say it like that or is that a little too well, general? No. So it's a, a little different. So okay. your, your Mars is in Aries, but it's in the eighth house, which gives it sort of that – that flavor that we read that was like, um, you know, helping others through relationship, including sexual relationships. Because um, the eighth house is all about like, like mystery and taboo. Oh, that's the other thing. The eighth house is very taboo. Um, like, and so diving into sort of that. And so, yes, you are wanting to give love, right? Because you're... Um, your Mars, the one where it's like you want to give love, is in in a very like masculine way, but in a very taboo and or sexual way because it's in the eighth house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so for me, my Mars and my Venus, so the way I, I, the partner I am looking for, the way I want to give love, and the way I want to receive love from somebody else, it, they're both in Aquarius. Okay, okay. Which is that like so free both. thinker. Yeah, yeah, so I have them both in the same sign. Okay. Your Venus is in Capricorn, which is an Earth sign. Um, and so, and that's why, like when I, when I look at your Mars, it kind of makes sense. But when I look at your Venus, I don't really... I wouldn't be like, oh, that's the thing right there. Whereas for me, it's like, oh yeah, it's obvious with my Venus and Mars. Yeah. Um, but so it's it's there's, and that's why it's like it's so complicated because there's so many different again pieces of the puzzle, and you kind of have to look at them all. And just because one piece of my puzzle maybe points to polyamory, it's not necessarily true for your same piece of the puzzle. You know. Yeah. Because yeah, when you put <clears throat> yeah when you put the pieces of the puzzle together and form the big picture it's mm -hmm. it might mean something else yeah yeah but so the way that i am looking to give and receive love is in the same sign which is aquarius mm -hmm. the other aspect is my north node is also in aquarius and it's right in oh, between wow. my venus and my mars yeah so i have my venus or no i have i have my my mars then my north node then my venus okay and they're all in Aquarius. And so also, right, the North Node is the thing that we are um, striving towards. We're lurking to, like, learn or the lessons we're learning for our, our entire life. Mm -hmm. Mine is in Aquarius. So it's like that is what I am here to sort of, like, learn and embody. And remember, so I, I'm an Aries, all about the me, but... My North Node Aquarius is saying is teaching me how to be more about the we, yeah. less about me and more about the we, and to look at like the group. Yeah. And so, isn't that interesting that my Venus, my Mars, and my North Node are all there in Aquarius? Yeah. And so it's like I'm. That's what I'm learning. And your Mars and your North Node are right next to each other. Isn't that interesting? And then we look at. I am an Aries, right? My sun sign, the, the core of who I am, the, uh, the traits that I easily embody are Aries. 
And those are the traits that you are looking to develop within yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you are an Aquarius and my North node is an Aquarius. So it's like we have our sun signs are the opposite of each other's North nodes. Yeah. So it's like the the thing the that Aquarius thing that I am I am going after you embody and you already have mm -hmm. those Aries traits that you were looking for I already have and I embody yeah so it's like we have the thing that the other person is working on yeah and so it's like we are each other's like best teachers in that yeah. way and that's something yeah. that we knew before we ever knew about astrology yeah i mean that's that's like a, a great you know more detailed description of like opposites attract yeah but like from the astrology perspective exactly yeah it's like we and, and we we've always felt that way before yeah. we knew about astrology that yes we have the same core beliefs and we we do have a lot in common um but like we are very different people like, you know, yeah. it, so we are but, that, that like opposites yeah. attract, we balance each other out. The things you're really good at are the things that I struggle with. Yeah. The things I'm really good at are the things you struggle with. Yeah. And we knew this from the very beginning of our relationship. And, and we've talked about it, how like, wow, it's so interesting that we, we complement each other and we sort of balance each other out. Yeah. And then to yeah. learn in astrology that like, the thing, the our north nodes, the thing that we are working towards is the thing that the other person already is. It's like, whoa. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, to me, that's uh, just our <clears throat> our natural pull and desire just to, like, feel whole and complete. Uh -huh. You know, it's like, it's like Avatar. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to, um, you know, master. All of the elements. All of the elements. Mm-hmm. And I guess, yeah, by master, I mean, I guess in our case, it's meaning like understand them and then develop the ones that, you know, are maybe not your natural tendency. Yeah. I think I, I really do think that's like, you know, what what Avatar and like, you know, what some of these other shows like where they do talk about signs and, and like becoming whole, like that's really what they're they're like getting at. It's just yeah. a fundamental human desire. Yeah. To pursue that, that balance. Yeah. Well, and if you're if you're self-aware enough yeah and you realize like this this is what like i want yeah exactly and i think i think people who who are into astrology that's exactly it it is it's because it's a way of understanding yourself of doing that self-discovery of learning more and and becoming more whole of not denying aspects of yourself that maybe you were told weren't good or were shameful, mm -hmm. but of embracing that and becoming whole. Just like an avatar, it's all the elements. Hello, yeah. we have all of the elements in astrology, mm -hmm. right? We all have all of the signs in our chart. You look at your chart and every single sign is in there. You might not have a planet in every single sign, but so we have all of the signs within us. And so it's learning how to balance all of that, how to cultivate certain aspects of ourselves um, and maybe let some things go that we realize aren't working for us, yeah. right? It's, it's all of that. It is self-development. It, it's just another tool to use in becoming whole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, yeah, I, so yeah, I just think it's so interesting of like looking at, yeah, when, when we look at our, our charts, the, um, right? Like you, you have very little fire in your chart and the places where you do, that's, that's the thing that you're working on, mm -hmm. you know, and I have lots of fire in my chart and, but I'm working on the areas where I have more water or air in my chart. Those are the things I'm trying to develop. And those are the things that you have and come easy to you. So it's, yeah, it's just so interesting how, how that plays out. Um, but so yes, going back to polyamory, I think if you, when you really look at my chart, it's pretty obvious with my Venus and my Mars, but also my North node, those three things really are like, whoa. And I, I wish yeah. I had known that. They're all Aquarius. <clears throat> yeah. When I That's learned that my Venus wild. and my Mars 
and my north node were all in Aquarius and I learned what Aquarius really means and I learned that the, that Venus is like the way that I want to be loved and Mars is like the partner that I'm looking for it, it just it was like oh my god if I had known this then maybe it would have made more sense when I started having feelings for other people and and wanted to have more than one relationship and and all that kind of stuff oh. um you know and but at the same time I do have to say we we also talked about that level of self-awareness and I did not have as much self-awareness so then again if someone had told me if someone had read my chart and told me about these two aspects of Venus and Mars and Aquarius yeah and been like oh me and if they had said you know maybe um, monogamy isn't right for you um, or you know maybe you might want to explore other ways of loving I probably would have been like yeah what yeah because again it's that level of self-awareness there so there were again I say I wish I had known but at the same time I don't know if it would have mattered yeah yeah exactly I mean that's it just reminds me of The Matrix. Like, I love that movie. That's, to mm -hmm. me, that movie is, like, like, what it describes is actually, like, awakening. Yeah. It's, like, becoming woke. Like, fighting. Mm -hmm. Like, getting past all of your limiting past beliefs. Mm -hmm. Or, like, they're, like, the machines. Yeah. And then it, it is you, like, freeing your mind. Yeah. And, like, attaining that level of, like, self-awareness. Mm -hmm. But, like, in in... The Matrix in the first one, like near the beginning, Morpheus tells Neo, like, you know, I can only show you the path, but you have to walk it. Yeah. So it's that same thing. You know, somebody can tell you exactly, you know, can like maybe describe you perfectly in detail. You can read your chart. Yeah. Tell you but everything. But if you're not, if you're not ready to walk that path, or you're not like open to like exploring that idea. Mm hmm And like, I guess like self-analyzing yourself. Yeah. Going through that process of self-discovery then. It's not gonna really mean anything to you, yeah. Or, or or it might you you know you might like, it might trigger like a like oh yeah that does seem true. Mm -hmm. But if you're like not ready to like fully like dig inward, yeah. Then it's it's not gonna have like that same impact. Exactly, exactly. And so that that again goes back to why why when I first started getting into astrology and would tell you about your chart, right? It, same thing. It's like you were open to hearing about it, but you weren't quite ready to do some of that, like, self-discovery or inner work or digging. Yeah. You know? I'm trying to think back, like, what? Right after what, we got what, married. What was, what was I going through at the time? Like, what, like, what, what was truly preventing me from wanting to do that? Well, it was right after we got married. I think I was probably in a little rut. I was kind of stuck in my ways. I was very, I was very focused on work at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I still am, but I, I'm a little more, I feel like I'm just like a little more balanced and open right now. Yeah. But yeah, I was very, yeah, I think like that was just like my one singular focus. And I just couldn't like snap out of that focus. Mm -hmm. Virgo. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I, I learned a lot and like, I'm glad I did it, but it, yeah, I mean, I felt like I was also kind of hiding from bigger issues mm -hmm. like these ones that, you know, I felt like were probably like causing me a lot of grief and anxiety and torment. I just didn't really like fully understand like why I was feeling certain things. Yeah. So yeah, then I just like, yeah, I just, I wanted that singular focus on like an external thing, which is work mm -hmm. to kind of like distract me. Yeah. What, what did, what did the, um, remember your, your North node, it was like, you were learning to let go of sort of that like work and, and focusing on, on work and money and looking more at relationship with others. Mm -hmm. That's what your North node said. And that's literally what has happened over the past, you know, like three years. Sort of when I started to have my awakening mm -hmm. and started talking to you about all of this, that's literally what has happened in the last three years. You realized you do want to focus more on your own growth. You do want to focus more on, on 
like your your own self and learning more about yourself and sort of letting go of like working so much and focusing on money and and all of that yeah 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 i mean it's yeah just i want to shift like just shift that focus yeah and so like what i feel like is a, is a more like healthy happier balance yeah <laughs> and yeah like it, it goes back and forth like because yeah my i feel like my natural tendency is a little more towards like the work the logical like that's just like my comfort zone exactly so yeah i mean like the focus is like sway back and forth but it's like gradually working its way towards yeah you know the, the better balance i'd say yeah exactly well and that's the thing so um you have a north node but you also have a south node and your south node is the opposite of your north node. That's that's why they're called north and south. So they're, they are always exact opposites. Mm -hmm. And so your south node is in, uh, let's look, it, the opposite of Aries. Um, oh, shoot. Let me look. I'm like, here is your... Your north node is in Aries, and your south node is in, what's, what is that, Virgo? What comes after Virgo? Oh, Libra? No. Mm. Libra? Your south node? Ah, yeah, Libra, I think. Anyway. Libra? Yeah, south node and Libra. But, um, ah, anyway, but so it's like, I know I'm like, sorry, like I said, I'm not an astrologer. I don't know everything. Um, but so they're, they're opposites. Mm -hmm. And so like the thing that you are more used to and comfortable is your, your South node. And so you're working towards your North node. And so like you are more comfortable, like, oh, oh, Libra is is um libras always have like a hard time making decisions that's kind of like the um they're they're um they they can be very passive they're sort of like the peacemakers um ter terry is a libra yeah um so that's my south node yeah that's your south node um but so like you're working towards yeah but so that's the thing it's like your yeah. north node is supposed to be like it, it's not easy yeah it's not easy oh i do i do feel like that's my more status quo normal state you 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 said that earlier yeah that you a peacekeeper go with the flow yeah don't rock the boat yeah that's like all libra sometimes it is hard for me to make decisions though because i'm trying to like be like oh what does this person think or like what would they want i'm trying to balance it out with this this person's want and it's like you know you're trying to balance like all these different desires and mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult <laughs> yeah sometimes it's overwhelming yeah because you're trying to like yeah you're trying to like optimize the system that's mm -hmm. has many constraints yeah it's difficult yeah yeah exactly and so that that's like the what you're comfortable in yeah and so it's whereas i'm like oh if i just went with what i wanted to be easy i'll just do that <laughs> i'm like i'm trying to balance all these other welcome wants. to my life if we just <laughs> if we just do what i want to do it's easy <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> there's that too but can't make it too easy for you no <laughs> okay uh, That's so fun. I don't know. I think it's pretty fun. I think it's fun. <laughs> Could be, but uh, not all the time. Anyway, where were you going with that? Just with like the south node. Just what's yeah. I don't know where you feel like most like more comfortable. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but so... I can't, I can't exactly remember. I know, I forget where we were going with that too. But uh, just, it was just the fact that you were saying like, like you know, um, oh, the, the working, the working, doing like working, that's where you're comfortable. Yeah. But like g going outside of your comfort zone and, and, and so that's what I'm saying. It's like that's the whole point of like your north node. Your north node isn't the comfortable place mm -hmm. for anybody. Um, the comfortable place is your south node. Um and so, and so North Node, it's not comfortable. It is going to push you to get out of your comfort zone and do the thing you don't normally 
do or wouldn't normally. And so it's like, it's like you're finally starting to feel that you're, you're feeling that pull to like get out of your comfort zone, to do something different and to, to sort of cultivate these aspects of yourself that you've kind of been ignoring. Yeah. And then when we look at your chart, it's like, wow, you're wanting all of the things that your North node says you're here to like learn. Yeah. 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 That's where I was going with yeah. that is that, yes, it's not comfortable. That's what's been so eye-opening about this is because like I've already had these thoughts and beliefs recently and now they're just being affirmed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's and it, exactly but how in I in a felt. specific enough way where it's not like I'm just latching onto something like super vague. Yeah. It's like specific enough where I'm like, wow, yeah, like that's, that, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like when, and our charts are very different. Right. And so when, when we talk about like your sun sign versus my sun sign or like your rising sign versus my rising sign, it's like, whoa, those are very different. Yeah. Right. And so like we were talking about, about like reading other people's charts and seeing like, oh, well, that's definitely not me. Right. If you were, if you look at my chart, we've already talked about how we are very opposite. And so when you look at my chart, if I were to be like, oh yeah, you've got Leo and you're super, you already said like you're not, mm -hmm. you know, you're not a performer. You don't like to be center of attention, all of those things, right? So you, it's like that, that's definitely not you, Yeah. you know? So it's not like all of these things are super vague and could apply to anybody. If you look at just one piece, then yes, maybe. But like when you look at all of it together, it's so specific and so spot on it's like how how do you deny that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> exactly. You can't. Unless you're just you just really can't accept it. Yeah. Well, unless you're like we talked about in that sort of like denial phase or yeah. you're not yeah, if you're, you're not willing if to If you're look open at enough, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you you can't deny that truth. Yeah. Covered a lot. Whew, we have covered a lot. This was this was a really fun one. Yeah. Mm hmm It was. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's become yeah, just much more important to me. So I really do enjoy talking about it now. Mm-hmm. I like talking about it with other people too and like seeing well, especially like with I guess just people in general who like who are just a little more like into astrology and aware of it. Mm-hmm. But even, even not, even just like as a more general discussion of like self-awareness. Yeah. Self-discovery it is. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's just new to me. It's new and exciting for me right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's still, it's still pretty new to me too and very exciting. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we got to talk about it. Yeah. More. And, and I like that too, that it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're an engineer, you're all about science and math and, you know, but then here's this thing that's all about, um, you know, that there, we don't have the science to like back it up or it's like, how is this explained? You know, how, how can the moon being in a certain place in the sky affect me as a person? But then like, look at it and we just did. And so I love that, that you are all about math and science and yet you know, you still are open-minded, Aquarius, to the possibility that like maybe we can't explain everything, you know, and, and maybe we can't explain exactly how or why astrology is accurate, but it is. Yeah. Like also, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot that, you know, the collective human knowledge like hasn't been able to explain. Exactly. So it's like, you know, as long as you like accept that, and yeah. don't have like you know blinding ego, mm -hmm. then yeah. I mean, I think I think it's just I think you have to be open to to ideas. But it's also like they're also well, validated. You don't, you don't have to be, but you are. True, you don't have to be <laughs> because I definitely you don't have to be. But there's was a, not open minded. I didn't used to be this open minded. True. I guess that's a little extreme to say you have to be, but if you are open. <clears throat> And then there's enough, for me, there was like enough truth to pull me in. Yes. Then, yeah. Yeah. Then I, then I just, then I went, I went for it. Yeah. 
I guess I, I took the red pill or the pill that it takes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You did. You yeah. took it. And now here we are. Yeah. That's why, like, just thinking back to that movie, there was so much, like, truth to it. And, like, when I was younger and I first saw it, like, I kind of latched onto a little bit. I was like, oh, wow, like, I think this is saying this. And, like, yeah. I felt, like, a small amount of truth there. But, like, now as I'm getting older, I'm like, wow, there's, like, so, they're saying so much in this movie about self-discovery that I, I just didn't understand at the time. Yeah. To the extent I do now. Yeah. It's also like when people like reread books, they like pick up on different things. It's like they have a different perspective and different awareness. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, it's along those same lines. Exactly. And yeah. I'm sure, uh, yeah, like that's a process that like, you know, I think is a lifelong process that you just keep pursuing your whole life. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps evolving and expanding, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so great to have this conversation specifically with you because you are very open-minded, but you also are that like math and science person. And so I love that it's like bringing it all together. It's not just yeah. people who were like into spirituality and, but like, Let's see Aquarian science you can too. be, it is. I don't want to be just one or one or the other. I want to be like open to all of it, all of it, as long as it's. And I feel like, yeah, it's not, I feel like I don't have to give up one to be the other. Yeah. I just add. Exactly. It's not like, yeah, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing something. Yeah. It's not one or the other. Yeah. Not it's not an exclusive. or, it's an and. Yeah. It's one and the other. Yeah. Exactly. All right. That is it. This is the final episode of our first season. Wow, we did it. We made it through an entire season of our podcast. It's so, uh, I don't even have the words. <laughs> it is so cool that we decided to do this. And it is so cool that so many of you have decided to, you know, go on this journey with us and tune in and listen every week. It's it's been so amazing um, to hear from all of you and for so many of you to reach out and just say like, you know, how, how much you love our conversations and hearing what we have to say because it really resonates with you and what you're going through and, and your own experiences with polyamory and open relationships and ethical non-monogamy. It has been so, so fun to do this and and to share this with all of you. So thank you guys so much for listening, for tuning in. This has been an incredible journey so far and we are so excited to keep it going. So like I said, we will be coming back for season two after the summer, but we really just want to take our time with dating and experiencing that and taking our time with recording our our episodes and getting our thoughts out there so that way um you know when when we do finally release them we feel like we've we've got some stories for you <laughs> um so yeah as always if you have been enjoying this podcast please 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 subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Please rate our podcast. Please like it. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, so subscribe on YouTube, like this episode or any episode. Your support really does mean the world to us. And and we look at these things and, and we look and see like, oh wow, people really liked this episode or, huh, not very many people listened to that one. I wonder why. And you know, we, we look at that stuff. So thank you for your support. As always, please reach out to us. Um, you can reach me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at underscore Alisa dot Janelle. Um, and if you want to reach out to me there to talk to Mike, let me know. I'll make sure he gets the message. Or you can email us at polyplusamore equals us eight at gmail.com. So that's how you can reach out to us and get a hold of us while, you know, we take a break before coming back for season two. And yeah, 
I will keep you all posted on Instagram about when season two is, you know, going to start up again. So yeah, follow me and I'll keep you all posted. Thank you all so, so much for listening and we'll be back after the summer. 